Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Greg, we still good? Yep. Good to go. Tony, ready? Let's do it. Talk. Check, check. Yo. Come a little closer to the mic. Come a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull, pull it. You can pull it to you too. Yeah, just yeah. There you go. There you Hello. go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I believe the children. Are Every time you say I believe, I think it's I believe I can fly. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that guy. I've got a funny story about that. So back. my wife, my wife and daughter were watching that documentary, and like they're talking about um, Johns Creek, Georgia, right? So they, um, you know, Daniel Mason Jones. Mm-hmm. We he just came, just came from, from okay. Class. So he lives in Johns Creek, Georgia. So I send him a text, and I'm like, "Hey, man, what's up with your neighbors?" And I, I told him that we're watching the, the documentary. He literally takes a video of him walking out of his house, opening his front door, and he lives directly across the hot oh street God. from that house. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's creepy, bro. He goes, I know. I know. Katie, she's on her way. It's, uh, I know, it's buried, but she's got no, it right just here. Got the bottle out. She's on her way. Okay. Just a little baby. Little baby bottles. Baby bottles. Thank you. Yeah, just keep it off the table, otherwise Greg will beat <coughs> you up. <coughs> Greg will jump over the table and okay, snatch it. Yeah, you can put I like the hats, too. Good brand Thanks, man. New jersey. Thanks, man. Nice. <laughs> nice touch. Yeah. You can put it on the table. I need to get some merch from my own car now. Here we go. Everything out of the camera? All right, cool. All right, we'll try this Small again. Come on, Slowpoke. I know. Let's go. We're in. Hey, hey. Welcome to your day off. My name is Gordon. Of course, sit with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Nothing. We're live at Orlando Premier, Premier, Premier Orlando, right? Premier Orlando. Say it three times. I can't. I can't okay. even say it once. You just heard me. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth a little bit. Orlando Premier. Bro, it's, now you're messing me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, big shout out and big thank you to our friend Rachel Brill, who uh, who's our contact here. I know that there's a huge, large team of Premier people, but she's our gal. Yeah. You know? Thank you, Rach. And, and, she, and she totally, she's proud. She, when we need something or we just, if we're lost, she helps us find our you way. Know, you keep saying that, and then what's going to happen is her texts are going to fill up, and then she's not going to be available to answer our text and, and, and come and hook us up anymore. So right. She can't be found. She can't be found. <laughs> <laughs> her name is not Rachel Bro. No. Her name is something else. Go look for somebody else right. in the premiere team. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> exactly. Hey, another uh, big shout-out and thank you to, uh, to Schedulicity. They're once again stepping up for us, stepping up for you, stepping up for, for everybody in the industry, certainly you solopreneurs and you um, sweet owners. Uh, uh, they're sponsoring our weekend. They're sponsoring the next few weeks of our, of our podcast, and you know we just love them so much. Yeah, and uh, you know we, we talked about this uh, on a prior uh, podcast about um, you know schedulicity and how wonderful they are, and how they partnered up with PBA uh, to to f- to give you a year free of schedulicity. Yeah, for sure. So um, I think it's called the one or PBA one or PBA one something. But when you sign up for that, you get a year schedule. See, not only that, but then PBA also doubles down and backs up um, because they are just the wealth of information, certainly if you're a young or if you're a solo. 
Yeah, and if there's a, something that you want to figure out, uh, you have a question of this industry, PBA, either, either they have it or they will find it and figure it out for you and help you uh, it, understand. It's such a perfect partnership between those two guys. You know? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, when they said that, I, I was like, that was so makes brilliant. Sense, you know, brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So, uh, again, thank you, Missy. Um, thank you uh, for, uh, for for hooking us up over there, Schedulicity. And, uh, you know, it's, yep. it's just awesome. They, they've, been gr- they've been great to us, and we know that they'll be great to you. So, uh, once again, we'll say it once w- one more time when we get to do live events. Um, we get to uh, dig in. We get to meet new people, and we get to dig in w- with, with old friends. And actually, today we get to do both, which is Yeah, uh, I was thinking the exact same thing. thing. Yep. We, get, we get to meet someone new, and we get to like uh, dig in deeper with, uh, with, with someone who's uh, OLE. Yeah, who's been, in, been on the podcast a couple of times, and it's, a, it's, yeah, it's an old friend. It's an old friend, and they're up to uh, to new good, cool stuff. So uh, we'll we we'll, we'll want to bring them in. Sound yeah. good? Let's do it. Okay, cool. So today our guest is Elaine Travis, um, independent color wizard, um, educator, and then her son Jack. And I'm not really sure why Jack is sitting here, but I'm sure Elaine's <laughs> going to let us know why Jack is sitting here. So Elaine and Jack Travis, Kelsey, <laughs> welcome yeah. to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Great to see you guys. In so, person. so last time we talked, you were living in Philly. You were talking about moving to St. Pete. Well, now you're actually there, right? I actually did it. Did you? How is it? Amazing. Amazing. There's a, there's a picture floating around on Facebook right now of me with frozen hair and frozen glasses. And it just says really big, I'm done. And that was the day that the, the change happened. That was it? So w- that was the change that, that was the day that you're like, this is a decision. I'm going down south. Or that was the day that you're like packing your truck. Literally, like if I, I, I pulled out my phone and I made a video of myself to myself with my frozen hair. And I said, if you are here this time next year, shame on you. You've been talking about moving for five years, and you still haven't done it. You need to do this. And that was it. House went up for sale the next day. Everything happened really quickly. What do you think the hang-up was or the fear was? The the business. I have a really successful business in Mm -hmm. PA. So it was the, I'm the only one here not happy. And if I go away, then what happens to everybody else kind of thing? So it was the pressure uh, of the other people. Everybody else's happiness, always. <sighs> that's a lot to hang on, yep. you know? Yep. That's Yeah, that's heavy. That's super heavy. Yep. Well, I see your hair's not frozen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so now, my gla- now my glasses fog up from the humidity. <laughs> my hair freezes from the humidity, but it's no longer frozen. Right. How do you like the St. Pete area? I love it. And, and, you know, Jack just said earlier, oh, it's becoming Miami. I'm like, no, please, no one move here ever again. Like, stop how, moving here. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. How, how does a North bird, like, make any demands on no per- nobody no progress more. here? No and more. Like, once I'm here, like, exactly. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Because we came for a visit, you know, seven years ago, and I want to live the way that it was seven years ago. And now, oh my God, since COVID, it's, like, blown up crazy. Yeah, so. everybody from Philly moving down. Philly, New York, <laughs> California, <laughs> yeah, everywhere. It's, yeah, it's kind of busy. But it's great. Great change. And, you know, people will say, you're so lucky. I'm like, I didn't win the lottery. I made a decision, and I went with it. You mm. know, anybody can move. I'm like, you're not a tree. You're not planet in the earth. Like, you can move. You just mm. get up and do it. But oh. no job, no house, no nothing when I moved. So. Yeah, we're headed to, uh, we fell in love with Sanibel, Sanibel Island. Oh, yeah. And they I know they, they got, got killed last last hurricane. Yeah, and uh, Tony's benefiting from it. Listen to this. So yeah, so I um, I rented a house from June first to June thirtieth, and so my wife, my daughter, my grandbabies, everybody's down there right now enjoying j- the month of June. I'm gonna join them on Tuesday, or Tuesday the fourth, uh, but I'm coming back on the 18th. I gotta fly back to DC on the 18th, but uh, but they get to enjoy it. And what was crazy is that initially we were, we were going to spend two weeks in St. Pete, but I got this house in Sanibel for the same price for a whole month. Mm-hmm. A month, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But in, and plus, we love that area, too. So it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, so my wife's like, you know, the, the beaches are back. They're beautiful again. Uh, the house is perfect. And uh, so I can't wait to get down there. But, yeah, awesome. the golf side of Florida is amazing. Yeah. Yep. Elaine, how was it like, um, like reinventing yourself? 
you know, because you're a salon owner now, you're not a salon owner, and like you now, you were always into independent education, but did you double down on it in St. Pete? I don't want to take your story. Just well, yeah, it's exactly what happened. When I came here, I said, you know, I really wanted to go all in with education, but like anything new, it was terrifying. I, I never thought that the education could replace the income mm -hmm. of the salon. So I did what everyone do normally does and said, okay, I have to just do what's comfortable and start doing hair. So I went, I found a suite, I shared a suite with someone and I did it for like two months and I was like, you're going back to who you were before you moved, you know, you're going back to the safety net. So I was listening to a podcast the one day and, you know, as an online person and she said, you have to just burn the boat. You have to burn the boat that got you to the island or you're never going to mm -hmm. move forward. And I was like, I need to burn the, burn boat. the boat. And I burned the boat. So it was 2019 and I said, if I can hit $100,000 by the end of my first year in gross income doing this, I will know it's a legit business. And I think I ended the year at like one hundred thousand and nine dollars or something. It was like Whoa. literally like so close. And so I what like, if you made it to ninety nine nine? Would you be like I'm out? Um, <laughs> I don't think I would be I'm out, but I think I would have been like this was really freaking hard, and to not hit that goal, how much harder is it going to be to keep hitting it? Mm -hmm. Is kind of how I think. I only ever compete with myself. So every year when I look at my numbers, even if it's five dollars, it has to be more than the year before, and nobody else is paying attention. It's just sure. me. So that was my number for me because I'm like, in this world, you have to hit that number to even feed yourself. Mm -hmm. So that was when it became a legit. And, and COVID was really kind to me because everybody was home. Yeah. And sure. I was one of the first doing, you know, virtual education. And people were like, what is this? How do I do this? How do I get on Zoom? And, you know, everything just timing wise worked. So it became a real business. And That's awesome. That's really awesome. So, kind of walk us through like, um, like what your uh, what your education program. What what are you teaching them? So it's all hair color. Well, I shouldn't say all hair color. Hair color is the ninety percent of it, but I also get into branding, life coaching, all of the things that go along with it. But there's been so many iterations since the beginning with like anything else. It started out as a standalone course, and people bought it, and everything was going great. But then I had no idea if I made a, an impact. You know, there was no scorecard, there was no result. So I was like, well, I really want to get to know these people. I want to know who they are. So I started doing course plus coaching. Then it became, you know, live events. We did Revival. We had Vivian McKinder and Beth Minardi and all oh. the things. So it just kept growing into this amazing virtual version mm -hmm. of, you know, just you want to go to a good show, create it. If nobody else is doing it, do it kind of thing. So that's where it went. So now I do that. And what I realized is a lot of people are getting great technique and technical education out here on the show floor. People are getting certified in extensions and this and that. But if you don't know how to market yourself and you don't have clients in your chair, all the technique in the world is not going to help. So my children, you met Bryn last time we were here, um, they fought tooth and nail not to be in the industry because they saw stressed it's out true. mom. <laughs> yeah, all, their whole true. life was like, we'll oh my it. gosh, why would I ever want to get involved with your crazy business? Um, but he graduated college. He took a entrepreneurship. He was an entrepreneurship major. And then he's like, well, what kind of business am I going to do? And I said, I think this industry needs really good focused marketing on the salon industry specifically for us. Very targeted, very intentional marketing. And we talked about it. And then Bryn wanted to be, you know, have her digital nomad lifestyle. And it was just a perfect <laughs> fit. So the two of them start it. It's called My Salon Concierge, and it's amazing. I am able to now, the update that we missed in between here was Bryn took over the salon when I moved to Florida. Yep. Then she found a found and married a wonderful man and moved to over. Wait know. a second, when you said wonderful man, why'd you wink? <laughs> 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 Sorry, Bryn. <laughs> so she, she got pulled back in. Well, she, she knew she wanted to leave the salon because she wanted to travel. She didn't want to try to, you know, run mm -hmm. it from afar. So she's traveling the world with her new husband. And she has always worked with me, as you know. She's my right arm in expert color solutions. Could not do anything without her. She helps with all the events and everything. She's the techie girl. Um, so she did not want to do the salon anymore. She took off to travel. And the two of them got together and created this whole custom platform that basically does everything that a salon owner wishes they had time to do automatically using technology and they're getting amazing results and 
and Jack here, I'll introduce Jack, is here with me. We'll tell you more about. Yeah, so an uh, important note is that they're running that salon in Pennsylvania. They live in Florida because of automation. Because yeah, we of got it, we got that, that's, it a, back. that's an important <laughs> detail. Oh, that look at his face. Oh. He's like, so I thought she, you were We free. own that salon. <laughs> no, no, no yeah, I was about to ask, like, uh, 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 like, did you guys sell the salon or something? So you, so you got it again. We got it back. It was it's like hot potato. Yeah. Here, mom, right. take Here it mom. back. <laughs> but it's working on complete autopilot, yes. right? Like, it's, I mean, you kind of just... What, check the books? Are we in the red or in the black? And yep, yep. That's, that's about Payroll, it. Payroll, you know, we do the inventory over the computer, open up the laptop, you know, it's been amazing. Okay, I have a couple questions before yeah. we get there, Jack, For but sure. we'll get there. So, like, how are you managing people? That, well, first, I guess the first question would be, like, do you have the same staff that you've had? Like, it, have you had a lot of turnover? Do you have to train new people? What's the word? We are so blessed that we have the original staff plus a few people since the original staff. And the way that I phrased it to them was, you know, I, I don't believe that you can really manage people. You can't motivate people. People are people. So when you have a great staff to start out, they don't need any kind of babysitting, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, we're all adults. They all have a key to the salon. They all know their schedule. They all know what they're supposed to do. So in the, in the once in a blue moon, you know, client that is, you know, I need to speak to the manager. It, it doesn't happen, but if it did, I'm a phone call away. You know, right. I can still deal with that. But with all of their automations, honestly, full book. With a we have we have a three month wait list right now because of what they're doing. Three, a three month wait list where? At the salon. At the salon. Yeah, every it's single girl is booked book solid with a wait list. Wow. Yeah, it's like the dream. So yeah. how how did the transition? So she handed you the keys uh, before you guys figured out the automation, or did you guys figure out the automation you first? You were into that a little bit before she left. Yeah, I mean, basically. Um, Bryn is my co-founder of this business. So she was the manager of that salon for about eight, eight years, right? So she knows what's, what's up with it. Um, and then when she got past the business back to her, we're like, how the hell are we going to run this, you know, from a different state? So we just tried a bunch of different stuff, right? A bunch of different technology. And we're like, wow, this is, this is working, right? Um, and this is, this is proprietary uh, technology or just using technology from what's available? Mix of different things. Um, so a lot of what we do does rely on paid social media advertising to mm -hmm. kind of drive traffic. Sure. Um, but then once they're there, that's when we kind of go into some proprietary um, texting automations, kind of we call it like the virtual receptionist, right? Yeah, Using yeah. a lot of AI stuff. But um, So a mix of both. But basically we realized, wow, this is, this is working really well. Um, and at the time, I was working in the music industry. My company went completely bankrupt. So 350 people were laid off. I was kind of left, where do I go next, right? Mm -hmm. And I was an entrepreneurship major, so I'm like, you know what? It's time to be an entrepreneur, right? I basically decided that that's never going to happen to me ever again, just being you know, out of my control, laid yeah. off. I was doing just a great job, right? Like it was out of my hands. So I was like, never going to let that happen ever again. And at this very same time, my sister Brynn was also trying to be you know, a digital nomad. So we're like, wow, okay, between the two of us, we know the industry better than most because we grew up in it, right? We saw the pain, the frustrations of trying to work behind the chair and also run a beauty business. Mm -hmm. So we said, why can't we market other beauty businesses the same way we're doing for our successful on, successful salon? Um, and that's how we started My Salon Concierge. And that was about September of last year. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty new venture. Wow. That's, a, that's, a, that's amazing. So what, like, uh, what, what are you easing? Like as a salon owner, I'm a salon owner. Hey Jack, yep. what's up? So you know what? What? How are you easing my day? I assume that's yes, what yeah, it is. For sure. That's what so it sounds the like elevator to me. pitch is: you do the hair, we get the clients in the chair. Gotcha. Right. We get we attract your dream client while you sleep. So quite literally, the goal is for you to tell me what kind of client you want, what kind of services do you want. And, and do you have like a questionnaire up, or something? Book. Because I mean, there's there's the thing about like that you hear from a lot of coaches like. What's her name? How tall is she? What she do for a living? For sure. All that. So all that stuff is for part sure. of it. So that is where Bryn is um, is fantastic, mm -hmm. right? So she's acts as our you know, marketing strategist. Wait a sec. Do I have to take a consult call with her at midnight because she's someplace in Asia? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually same time. Funny right enough, right it's she's only like an hour, an hour earlier yeah. earlier than us, uh, <laughs> which I was I was very concerned about that uh, <laughs> working with her. But no, it, that's actually been quite easy. Um, but yeah, we, we start everything with the end goal in mind, right? So I'm all about reverse engineering. So 
it's basically if we don't know what we're, we're working towards, what's the point, right? right? So I'm working with a fitness coach right now. It's okay. How much do I weigh now? How much do I want to weigh? Kind of come up with a game plan. In the same way as that, we start with everything. What's the dream situation? Is it working three days a week, doing hair color? You know, what services would you ideally want to be doing? When and for whom and for how much? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go to work to make that happen for you. That's cool. So are you, like you, you mentioned, I think you mentioned after we push record, are you doing, um, so you're doing like, uh, like targeting ads on like social media and, and that stuff? And, exactly. and so kind of you do that for my salon, but I, it looks like my salon, I assume. Precisely. Exactly. So a lot of people I work with have absolutely zero online identity, reputation, branding. So we, we start from scratch. And in the matter of weeks, it goes from you don't appear on the internet to mm-hmm. you're the top ranked on Google. You're yeah. popping up all your time on Facebook. All that good stuff, yeah. I mean, we work fast, right? So we want to have drastic transformations. So our goal is we work with people for three months, and the goal is you're a completely different style, it's a completely different business, very fast. So, you know, I have one client I've been working with for six weeks. Mm-hmm. She went from being a, you know, renting a chair to now leaving that salon, opening her own salon, and hiring staff all in six weeks. Whoa. So, wow. like, this is, it's fast. Do you and also help them get out of that contract? <laughs> <laughs> they, they just did away with all that. Didn't you see that? There's, oh, no the yeah, there's no more non-competes? Mm-hmm. No, I don't mean that. I mean, like, but I'm in a salon suite, and I have oh, a... Oh, oh, the yeah, rent. Yeah, I got, I got to rent. I got to pay. In her unique situation, um, I think she was just... It was like a booth renting situation, yeah. so it wasn't very formal. Probably months got and it. months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... It wasn't like your mom who left her sweet partner after two months and <laughs> left it with the <laughs> bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's out. Yeah. Here's out. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it, it's working really good. I'm very happy. And honestly, it's been, it's been very rewarding from a perspective of I truly feel like I'm helping people and I feel like the work we're doing is actually changing their lives. Like, no, that's you know literally. What I'm like it's, it's very much changing their business and then, you know, their income level and time with family. So I'm seeing that direct impact fast and it's been very rewarding for so me. So when you were obviously using your salon as the, the, the test, exactly. exactly. And now everybody's booked three months out in, in advance. Uh, do you have an operation manager that you guys have uh, like meetings or calls, or is it, is it just pretty much all? It's all technology, man. Like every day, we can just open it up and basically see what's happening, right? I mean, yeah, we had we had to turn off their ads at one point because we had seventy one people on the wait list wow. at one time. Yeah, that was like three so. Then you span. don't want to have people that are pissed off because they want to come and then they have to wait too long. So right. we can turn it on and off, just communicating with them, like, hey. Yeah, pull back that throttle. We have too many clients. Yeah, that's the best complaint we get that's is uh, uh, that's a really I'm actually good really to have, too right? busy, <laughs> and I, I think it's hilarious. They're like, "I'm too busy. You got to turn these ads off." That's right? amazing. Like, that's incredible. Um, shout out, uh, you shout know, out, Sarah. Do you know what I hear is that um, you know Jack uh, in six weeks had that like that booth renter who then opened a salon. I think like um, Elaine goes back to Philly and everyone's out. Everyone's opened their own salon all around that, town. That can happen. <laughs> hey, d- don't think I haven't thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Like Jack, slow those ads down, yeah, bro. Exactly. I got a business to protect. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting though is they're so good with the Google piece that the person that we've been promoting through the ads was two years out of beauty school. Not a lot of confidence. Not a lot of any. Like she wasn't an expert by any means. She's the one with the seventy-one on the wait list. Every one of our Google reviews mentions her name. So now if a, if a client Googles the salon, they're asking for her because yep. Little her Elaine. name, her Whoa, name was so in, the, cool. in the Google app. Oh, that's a question. So yep. I'm a salon owner, mm-hmm. fairly successful salon. Got a couple up and comers. Like we can, so d- it doesn't just have to be like, like X salon. It can be like X Precisely. person that works at X salon. Precisely. That's exactly. Incorrect. So that's why I think really working backwards is critical, right? So it's not just it's we're well also advertise Also the with that, Jack, and yeah. I'm going to like I'll high five you a little mm-hmm. bit, is that only somebody that's worked within the industry gets that, gets that like, eh. you know, because, because optically like, oh, that's a successful salon, but you can have people starving inside of that successful salon. Yes. We've yeah. seen it. Yes. You know what I mean? So so that's, that's really ideal. I mean, is there... I guess it's a weird question because it'd be hard to like, but would there be a way if I'm a starving salon to hire you to kind of help pump me up or would it at that point, would it have to come from the salon or is every situation different? 
Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-mm. Not so quite, like, to be so honest. Okay, so like, if if I'm an independent in, well, I've been I'm 30 years in, right? And I cut my book in half during COVID because I don't want to work that way. But if I wanted to generate that, oh, this isn't a good example because I'm a, because I'm a sweet owner. But if I worked in a salon and I wanted more clients, could I, as an independent person that worked, not an independent like business, but working within a business? Can I, could I hire you? It's just making it. sense. For sure. You know, so like I like a single that, hairdresser yeah, and wanted to, he works in a commission a salon. Cash. Yeah, yeah, there it is. In that situation. Forgot about that commission. It's yeah, been yeah, a lot of years. For sure. <laughs> so any commission stylist listening, um, the best way to go about it would be basically passing our information along to your owner. Because in my opinion, part of working under a commission structure, your commission owner should be helping you with your marketing. Right? That's kind of part of the, That's part the, deal, of the bargain. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so ideally we work with, salon owners of commission salons, as well as suite owners. So because working with individual commission stylists gets a little Hairy. complicated, <laughs> and it's it's a lot of going back and forth with the owner, so I might as well just work with you know the owner directly because they're, they're the, the real uh, main honcho. Right? I got another the real scenario McCoy. for you. So say I had a salon. Say I just had six hairdressers, okay? Uh, could, could, like, I'm... You're you're improving people's lives in less than six weeks. So if I say, you know what, th- we'll take the, the, the least amount to the person with the most book, and could we run something for the salon, but f- the first uh, s- series, we, we kind of highlight the, the person with the least amount. The next series, the person right behind them and that way the one with the least amount probably will move to the end of the line mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and do you guys rotation? strategize like that to yeah to make sure you get everybody busy yeah so everyone's very different um owners want to do different things distribute how they will that's completely in their control and we we work in any situation um as far as kind of allocating it appropriately um but my advice the easiest thing to do would be to advertise basically one service offering that all those people Who do, from and then kind of distributing it, almost like a restaurant. Like, you know, there's four tables, and one at a time is distributing it to different people. Um, that's the, the easiest we've found, rather than, you know, two weeks of advertising this person and this person, right? It's just right. really, what does this salon do, and then distribute it appropriately, these different staff members. That messaging could get confusing, too. Right, because that, yes. that first person who's the least becomes the most, and and it, and it passes everybody up. And says, <laughs> ah, you know, I've yeah. only been in the industry for two years. I got 71 people. So, <laughs> so that's, exa- exactly that's exactly what's happening. What happened. Actually. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what More happened. More experienced stylist who is used to a steady mm-hmm. flow of clients. Like, what the hell is going on? Why right. is my name not on Google, right? So they're seeing, because my opinion is, you can be the best stylist, the best hair colorist, right? But if no one knows who you are, then what good is it, right? Yeah. A lot of these younger stylists who really aren't that experienced are making more money than than their counterparts just because they're marketing themselves well. Go to social media. Right? Yeah. This is, I, 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 the young people have the advantage over his old people. Anyway. <laughs> yes. I, I'm kind of <laughs> fired up by this a little bit, actually. Yeah. Is that, like, uh, again, been doing hair for 30 years, and, like, you know, the majority of my career was, like, baby lights and this kind of stuff. And, and, like, what we're seeing everywhere in the world now is, like, is, like, balayage and lived-in hair. I mean, I, I think it's moving along, but it's we're still in that situation. So, like, I would love to be like, I, I, I'm thinking like, how could how could Jack help me? You know, and I was thinking, wow, it'd be really cool to do a whole campaign about baby lights again, like make that cool again. Mm-hmm. You know, or more importantly, like, I don't necessarily need a 20 year old client, but I would love to have a client that's like 40 plus who who digs, who still who wants the baby lights kind of look to it. For sure. And to speak on that, I think. I always put myself in the shoes of an average consumer because that's all I am, right? I, I know the beauty industry, but even certain terminology I'm not familiar with. So even baby lights, right? So my thing is when you're marketing something, you're marketing the result they're going to get. It's not necessarily the technique, the balayage, this, whatever. It's the gray away package, right? It's I have gray hair now. I don't want gray hair. So my whole thing is speaking to the consumer on a certain le- a simple level of the transformation they're going to get by getting those services, right? Because when I get in my, ha- my hair cut, I don't necessarily care how the barber is doing it, right? Some fancy technique, whatever, I don't really care. It's I want a good haircut at a good price with a good guy I have a good conversation with. Mm. That's what I want. We, um, I just saw a bunch of ads from that United just put out. 
and United is no longer talking about the air. It's talking about the destination. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. everything is like the whole ad campaign is like, look at all these beautiful places. Oh, guess who can get you there? Right. Yep. And, th and this is kind of what I'm hearing exactly. when you said that. It's like it, it's about the destination necessarily, not yep. the not the not the means in which to get there. But hey, guess what? I can get you there. Yeah. Right? That's brilliant. When we're buying something, it's we're paying for convenience, a feeling or sometimes just, to, you know, to impress people. Right. It's that's how can we inflict those emotions through through the marketing because they're looking for it. They want to look that better. Beauty is you're going in the salon to walk out a better version of you, quite simply, right? You want to feel more confident, whatever it is. So uh, Even as a hairdresser, I know when I get a fresh haircut, I feel, feel like a million feel, bucks. You yeah. feel fresh. I do. I yeah. feel fresh. I feel fresh. Yeah. I feel so fresh. it's just articulating yeah. that through the digital world, basically, for the, those people to basically know, like, and trust you to make a confident buying decision yeah. um, to give you a try. It's interesting that um, – and I'm guilty of this, but I think as an industry, we're also guilty of this. Sometimes we forget that our clients want to feel beautiful. They want to be, they, they want to feel seen and heard. And, and, and although that's your overall goal, especially if you have someone that you've been doing for like 25 years, you forget that, that element. And you forget that like, oh, they're here not for the haircut. They're here to feel, they're here to leave and feel a certain way. For sure. And I think why I appreciate this business is because it's one of the, the few left that really does rely on that human to human interaction. Right. So I made jokes all the time that people were saying that you're their therapist, right? It's that every six weeks, that conversation, that experience. So it's this industry, you know, as AI is going to replace a lot of jobs, this is a very industry that really can't be replaced by AI. But my opinion is how can we use AI tools to help with all the rest of the BS that comes with running a beauty business, right? All right, so how are and we going to use AI? For sure. So my whole thing is working smarter, not harder, right? Focusing but, how, on but, 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 but let's not talk in broad for terms. Sure. Like, like how is AI, here's the deal, is that we've had lots of conversation about AI, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, and we've had lots of conversations about it, which, by the way, huge fan of AI. Mm -hmm. Don't think I'm coming from any place else. But, right, that. For sure. but how can we use it in the industry? Like, how can we use it industry specific, not just writing our emails, not just yes. writing our, our, that kind of stuff? You know, is, th is there something that you guys are seeing where we can use it specifically for the industry? And again, not just sending out like marketing tools. So for me, I'll answer first. For yeah, me, yeah. from a hair color education standpoint, Doing my education for seven years, the same questions come every single day. You know, you can imagine yeah. the same question, same question. So I'm training my own GPT GPT yep. that people can type in that same question, and it's going to be answered in my voice. Mm. So that's where I'm using AI. And are you using that like in your DMs? Are you using like many, what's it called, many chats? Many chat, many chat I've been using. They're kind of a pain, it's not, pain in the butt. It's not, yeah. it's not perfect. But he'll tell you how they use it differently as far as automating response and client communication. Um, but for me as an educator and as someone who has to communicate with my list, sometimes I go to write my newsletter and I got nothing. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, I have to do this every week to three different lists. Like, what am I even going to talk about? And that's where it comes in great, yeah. you know. And, and if I have to think of a name for the show that I'm doing this whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Mm. I'll say to ChatGPT, you know, you know, be a marketing expert and help me come up with a name that relates to a hairstylist who wants to learn about da da da. da and I give it the whole description, and it'll give me like five. And and sometimes I'll be like, you can do better than that, <laughs> and then it'll give me another answer. So that's that's how I'm using it. But how are you using it? Yeah, I think for us, it's a lot of um, automating very mundane, repetitive tasks. Yeah. Right. So imagine I'm advertising for you, right? Um, let's say they come across an ad at 10 o'clock at night, right? The consumer, they want fast, right? It, we're leaving the Amazon Prime world where I ordered last night, wanted today, I want the DoorDash here in an hour, right? So I when they that see that ad, yes, you need a frictionless experience where if they see the ad at 10, by the next day during your business hours and they're going to call to book a point, they already forgot about you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's how are we yeah. going to get them now when they want to make that buying decision, even if it's at 10 o'clock at night. So let me throw in a schedulicity ad here. So with uh, <laughs> with online booking like such as schedulicity, yes. you can book your appointments all night long. Carry on. Amazing. And I'm glad you brought that we up. We love your schedule. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are terrified to use online booking, which I find preposterous. Um, it just kind of surprising to me because they complain that 
they have to do so much, but they're not willing to change and actually implement online booking. Online booking is amazing from both sides. From a consumer, if I'm looking for a new barber, he doesn't have online booking, next. So when you're talking <laughs> about, so, yeah. so the friction is coming from, from uh, salon professionals. That's what you're talking about? Or are you talking about from the consumer? From the salon professionals. Salon professionals. A lot yeah, of them it, okay. are very reluctant to change, right? Well, let me tell you this things. right now. Yeah. And we heard this number directly from Schedulicity um, in one of their meetings, but um, something like 82% of the, the appointments that are booked through Schedulicity are after hours. There you oh, go. Absolutely. 100%. You know, and like Tony kids all the time, like sometimes he'll wake up in the morning and he'll have like appointments booked at 2 a.m. I'm like, who got drunk and started booking? 100%. You exactly. know? What, what friction he runs into is they have Schedulicity or another platform and they say, but I don't let my clients use it. I put it in there for them. I'm like, why? Why, mm -hmm. yeah. why are you doing that? You might as well carry around the, the Milady uh, yeah, the big paper, book, paper right? book with your pencil. Yeah, so that, that's we do have some uh, sweet mates that have that stuff. Yeah, still. <laughs> they're yeah, fighting the it tooth yeah. and nail. Yeah. And, and to be clear, he didn't, you know, state this, but we aren't Schedulicity or Salon Concierge. We work with the booking Any platform. Of the book this no, is no, not sure. a booking yeah, yeah, platform Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do yeah. want to be clear that what we do, it's not a booking platform. It's a, you know, complement to any booking software. So what I focus on is the marketing and the communication from the time they see the ad to the time they're in the chair and post visit for a review request, which I'll get into in a second, but definitely not a replacement for booking software as we work in hand in hand with any of them. And then back to like the automation. So let's say 2 a.m., you know, they're drunk, they want to get their mm. appointment booked, whatever. Because um, all decisions are good decisions are made at 2 a.m. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> they click that they're interested, name, phone number, boom, they get a text instantly. Hey, thanks so much for your interest. Book here, right? Now that we have their phone number and information, we can put them through a handful of different automations to essentially act as a virtual receptionist, right? So automating these monotonous, repetitive tasks that traditionally a yeah. receptionist would have to do. But we find that a lot of people don't have the luxury of uh, having a receptionist, let alone even if you do, that receptionist probably doesn't want to text them or call them at 2 in the morning <laughs> when the people are drunk. Exactly. So and that's expensive to have a receptionist 24 hours a day. Exactly. So this is your 24-7, never calls out, never gets right. sick. Nice. Receptionist. So, Jack, I can do, like, um, so w with your service, I can, like, send out, like, um, onboarding, like, questionnaires and stuff like that? I'm glad you asked because <laughs> um, that was a setup. one of our big <laughs> strategies is a virtual consultation. And this has been huge for people, right? So the people that tell me they're afraid to let people book themselves online, what we do is basically create a virtual consultation that a new client has to fill out and think, all of us do this every day, right? So we go to the dentist, the doctor, we fill out questionnaires beforehand. Hey, what medications are you on? Um, what surgeries have you had, right? So to me, it's why is it any different for the beauty industry? Why are people not filling out forms mm -hmm. before appointments? So right. what we do is in the same way the doctor does, we ask things like um, your hair history, picture of your hair now, picture of your hair where you want it to be, maintenance preferences, and then signing off with things like color consent forms, cancellation policy agreements, right? I thought you were going to say, uh, what med medication? Uh, bring me some of that when you come <laughs> in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, med so medications to get a better <laughs> feel of how crazy they are, yeah. Maybe I should add that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> just that alone. BYOP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but that alone has been amazing because the, the stylists are saying, they just feel way more prepared. First off, they find out, can, can I even, the timing, can I even the timing do this it. transformation they want realistically? Um, and by the time that client's in the chair, they're fully prepared. They know exactly who it's going to be, what they want, um, and they can schedule their day appropriately and save about 15 if minutes. If the client had pics, could they upload the pics or whatever? Exactly. Like what they were text it, it's all over text. They send pics. Um, they think they're talking to a, a human being, by the way. That, that's At two in the morning, they are not thinking that they're speaking to a human being. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that's a good point. But <laughs> yeah. we we have it framed as very, very conversational. Um, like for Lux, it's, hey, it's Rachel from Lux Car Lounge, who is a real person um, <laughs> and, and ish. the receptionist. But ish. But Rachel ish. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's that's automatic. Really? I appreciate it. Yeah. Here's, here's what's amazing, Jack. Is that I've been doing for hair for thirty years. We've done five hundred and fifty podcasts. We've done like like we've had lots of conversations. This w w 
what you're providing is the single thing that the industry needs. It's the hardest thing in the industry is to build a book. It, it's it's the like I'm talking to you. I have no clue how to run ads. I'm talking to and you. Nor I should have, you. That's my, my right. whole thing is that it's you got to focus on what you do best and delegate the rest. I didn't know that, there was a hole here until belief. this conversation. Say again. I didn't know there was a hole here until this conversation. Like like yeah. I'm like I'm like this would this is. This is the hardest part, and you're taking care of that. And like, exactly. I, I, I can't say that enough, or I can't stress enough how like how amazing that is. And especially if you can do it, like, oh yeah, I got Jack. I got a Jack. I'm good. My book will be filled. Yeah, yeah. that's for a, sure. Because you can focus on what you actually signed up to do, and it's to, it's to do hair. That's yeah, they're that's they're it. creative professionals. They don't want to focus on <laughs> the business side. And that like, that's the most every stressful salon thing. Needs a Jack. Every, Every salon, salon needs a jack, jack in a box. Yeah. Jack in a box. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh. <Ba-dum-bum. laughs> that but might be a uh, uh, copywritten. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 yeah. Unless you bring a burger. It yeah. wouldn't be a full podcast with me without you needing right. to yeah, bleep something sense. out. No, no, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> jack, honestly, that's amazing, man. Like, like, I'm I'm seeing lots of light bulbs go off, and like, that's this is the hardest. This is the hardest like thing to do. Yeah, you know, whether whether you're building your own book, whether you're building someone else's book, like like you figured out the secret piece, you know? Yeah, I mean, our whole belief was, yeah, there's a ton of marketing companies, but none that understand the unique complexity of the beauty business. None that have the, the empathy of what they go through every day. You know what I mean? But we saw it. Like I saw the the insanity that and the, the, the struggle, right? The, the yeah. struggle. Yeah, right. The stress. It's too much. Trying to be behind the chair, pick us up from school, run a staff, train staff, appointments, marketing. Like, you can't do it all. And what's amazing is that just the um, the confidence boost, right? Like, no matter how great I am at doing hair, like, if I don't have clients in my chair, I think I suck, you know? I or mean, Lori, perfect example. So, Lori is one of her students for hair color education, right? And all day long, we can talk about hair color, how to do it, but until you have a human being in the chair to practice and on you're not going to gain confidence but it, when they have clients in the chair all day long they're forced they're thrown into the deep end mm-hmm. and she was at her retreat and she's a completely different person she is yeah way more confident another thing that i see is an issue especially with the solo suite you know sole proprietor is they want to have like eight bottles of color or tubes of color in their suite and they're not prepared for anything that shows up so just the the virtual consultation piece they know, oh, they're going to get cowboy copper and they're blonde. I better go get some go damn copper. You know? Salon centric here. So, I yeah. Mm-hmm. So ev- every step of it is just making life so much easier. When I think about when, when he does a presentation, he has SpongeBob with all the, the vacuum <laughs> and, like and the colors in his hair and all that. Everything. And he's like, this was my mom her whole life trying to do all the things. So for me to be able to successfully run a salon living in Florida that's in Pennsylvania and ever have everybody with a wait list is priceless. It's incredible. Dude, uh, priceless is right. I mean, like, I and that I'm going through numbers in my head. What is this worth and wh- what's the value here? Mm-hmm. Um, th- Are you I, becoming I, an investor? Um, we can chat. Happening. <laughs> no, no, I, it's just, it, it's amazing. It's like, it's literally a hole that I didn't think yes. anybody but the sole proprietor could, not the sole proprietor, but the, the person, the sole person, well, we're all sole proprietors in a weird way, right? Yeah. Even if you work yeah. for a commission salon, you know, the sole proprietor, um, I didn't think it was a hole that could be filled except from the sole proprietor. Yeah. And I think it's just being a little bit smarter, you know, about it. And like, it, it, it works so much into my soul because you see all these super successful like influencers online and stuff, and you're kind of like saying, "I got you. You don't. I, you don't have to you learn don't have this. To be that. Yeah. I got 100%. you. One hundred percent. So, and not yeah. that you need a million followers, but no, just like not even because what you need is those hundred clients to those hundred new clients yep. to come in or those seventy one yep. that are waiting. One hundred percent. So, I'm all about like I did a pitch this morning and basically saying Instagram is not everything, right? So everyone has this pressure. Roll, oh, I got to slow post your roll over there, kiddo. I got to post yeah. three times a day. I got to do yeah. stories. I got to do TikTok. I got to do this, that, right? And they don't do anything because they're overwhelmed by it. So guilty. my thing is using Facebook and Instagram for their paid advertising, right? And I can start a, I could start a page today and advertise tomorrow. doesn't matter the amount of followers or anything. It's It's just spending money appropriately in the right places to the right people that can be thousand times faster than trying to gain followers over a two-year span who aren't even going to maybe even come in anyway Mm. what's what what good is ninety thousand followers if they're not coming in 
right? Yeah. It's you want the people in your town, the people you actually want in your chair to be looking at these posts. And that you can do through the advertising. Well, we talked about it a little bit earlier on, um, on our last podcast, but I'll share it with you as too. I was having a conversation with Ruby Divine, not the name drop, Ruby Divine. Um, but uh, well, I was having a conversation with Ruby Divine, and Ruby um, has a very large following everywhere, you know. And she said, here's how she focuses that. And I think this is so brilliant. And I think we know this innately, but like what is, w- to put it to words is awesome. So her Facebook is for her clients. Her Instagram is for her hair family. And her TikTok is for her global uh, community. And I thought, like, that, that yeah. that's makes yeah. so much sense. Because, you know, sh- from a global, co- she's not going to get any clients from a global thing. But what can she get? She can get brand deals. Of course. Yeah. You know, for what is she doing with her Instagram? She, You know, she's going to reach other hairdressers. She's an educator, so that's good. Mm-hmm. You know, what's she going to get? She's going to get brand deals. And what's happening on, on, on her Facebook is she's getting clients and picking up clients from there. And I thought for that sure. it's such a, such a brilliant strategy. And I think it's we kind of know that. But, again, but once it's words, it's like, oh, that's, that's a hula hoop. That's brilliant. Yeah, I think for most people, they don't want to be bothered with it at all, with social media posting. So a lot of my clients, I don't have them post anything. Literally n- nothing. You take over. Take over. I don't even post on the feed. Yeah, I don't, I don't even post at all. I just oh, ask just I ask for pictures, right? And I create brand assets. So basically, yeah, ads. Um, Google My Business. I kind of clean that up a little bit. But I don't make a single post and I, because I don't. it doesn't move the needle forward, right? right? It's the, if you have enough paid advertising, you don't need to post Period. So what? So what's? Uh, a, I'm not asking for your fees necessarily. Oh, for I'm, sure. But but what, what? But what would? What would a committed campaign cost like uh, on social media? For sure, it's really not much as as people think. Um, if you're launching it correctly to the right group of people in the correct area, I mean, you could spend. We recommend a minimum of twenty bucks a day. I think is a good. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Um, so hundred and twenty bucks, hundred and forty bucks, whatever that is, right? But keep in mind that that money you put out is going to come back in space. Fast. Right. Yeah. And you're not going to keep spending that $20 a day unless it's actually generating new clients and money through the door. And that money through the door is paying for the next ad, right? So it's really, it's not much. And if you know what you're doing and um, you're keeping a close eye on it, you're not going to spend that 20 bucks a day unless it's making you. Like our goal is for basically every dollar we put out in ads, we want about five bucks back instantly. Right. And the goal that's is. A, that's a bold statement, sir. Yeah. That's what it's been so far. That's a, that's about what we're getting on average um, in ad spend. And, and keep in mind, that's only on the first visit, okay? We're not looking for one-and-done clients either. The main no. goal is we want people are going to keep coming back on a recurring basis, leave a good review for us, refer friends, and become, friend, you know, become friends and lifelong clients. So that's a huge piece of it is, especially in your marketing, you don't want to be – attracting window shopper, one-and-done clients. No, not at all. Tire kickers. Tire kickers, not at all. How can you attract who you actually want, which is someone's going to come back on a recurring basis? How, how long is it, like, if I came to you and uh, you're going to help me rebrand myself, roughly how long does it take for you uh, to kind of rebrand me? Fast. So it starts off with we're going to meet and go over where you're at now, where you want to go. And within two weeks, we'll start to make that happen. The first client will be in the chair. The goal is within two weeks. Wow. So I need to interject here. The only time it's not that fast is because the hairstylist doesn't give him what he needs. Yeah. That's the People biggest overthink hurdle. A lot. They over. Oh, I have a pimple. I don't want to take my picture. And I don't it. it's crazy. Right. I think so people hold themselves back. Yes. It's, it's they don't. It's, the it's almost they don't. They're afraid of what's about to come, possibly. They don't feel we like they've imposter Wait, syndrome. Wait, you have to share yeah. the feedback. You have to share the, the woman that just called and left a message about work-life balance because I think it's hilarious. Well, this is one of his clients recently. Well, yeah, I mean, I alluded to it earlier a little bit, but one of my clients left me a voicemail complaining that she's insanely busy and that she feels like she doesn't have work-life balance, I guess, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, we we, 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 we filled it's all. Just so typical. We filled all I the have gaps no that clients. she. Oh my gosh, I have yeah. too many. Can you turn mm. it yeah, off? She's now she's now she's upset because she has too many. Too many clients. Right. So she's you know, like, I think she's, she's just upset. I'm she's gonna take upset. that. Right. I'm gonna. I'll take it. So that's a yeah. win. Yeah, it's a win for me. So, yeah. but but actually, you know, we did. We're like, all right, let's turn the ads off a little bit. It's not anything. You know what I mean? There's. It's not uh, black or gray or you know gray and white, whatever. Um, everything can be changed and customized. Um. 
so yeah, I mean, that's honestly the, the most negative feedback we've gotten is that now they're too busy, which is quite common. <laughs> and, and the biggest much. hurdle is, I don't know my Facebook. They'll, they'll say, what's my Facebook password? And he's like, I don't know. I didn't make your Facebook. Like, so getting them set up. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's hairdressers that are non-techie yeah. have yeah. been the challenge. For but real. once he gets them oh. over the hump, and these are really non-tech, like they can barely get on a Zoom for them to have, you know, the success has been really That's great amazing. And Dude, um, that's, I'm so impressed. I am too. And, and g- do you feel the same way? Like, yeah. this is a hole that you're filling that I didn't even know we needed? Yeah, I didn't know we can invest too. So, <laughs> <laughs> this there is now go. Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, hey, Sharks, for 20%. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here's a question that you're going to get, and I'm, I'm having it, so we're going to have the conversation. Is that. So if if you're doing running all these ads and 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 we're filtering all these clients into it, are these clients filtering into my bit? Here's the qu- real question: If if Elaine's my new client, are is your company then grabbing her her phone number, her all her contact information, or is that or is that staying directly with me? Yep, that's all staying with you. So what we like to do is we set up each client with essentially a digital phone number that we can do a bunch of those automations on. Which, by the way. So many people I talk to are communicating with clients on their personal cell phone number. Which well, don't look is, at me like that. Is that are you guilty? Is it the case of that? Oh, yeah. guilty. Well, I'm guilty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 100% That's guilty a for the same thing. You know, we've had the same clients for 30 years. You know what I mean? So it's like. But do you have your dentist or doctor's personal cell phone number? Well, he's not coming to see me every. I'm not no. seeing him every six weeks, and I don't know about his kids, uh, and they don't invite me to the wedding or the funeral or the whatever. I think there should work life separation. Yeah, a little right? bit. Right? Like I get it, yeah. but. You know, I think there's there's smarter ways to go about it, and our solution is a digital phone number, which basically, it's an app on their phone, so it's not like you have to get a separate phone or anything crazy. Right. It's on their phone, their same area code, behaves exactly like a normal number, client doesn't know the difference, but there's separation, and through it, you can do things, some crazy automated stuff, um, so that you're not manually texting back each person so right? i can send an email say hey guys i changed my phone number to my new digital phone number exactly mm. exactly in one click and just in Ooh. one click you could text 250 people you know with whatever you want um it's wild it's wild dude that is i i, I again i'm i'm kind of at a Are loss you of words I, a little bit i am i'm finding myself enjoying this moment i guess yeah, yeah, exactly. me, too. <laughs> me too i, I get it I, i'm just i i'm literally like blown away this is like such the biggest the biggest challenge with our industry as a whole it's our biggest challenge as a salon owner it's our biggest challenge as and even like again like we're, you know i'm 30 years in but like i'm like i, I would love this service even if it's just to get 10 clients in, you know, like, you know, you, you, like you, like, uh, did we talk about, I don't know if we talked, did we talk about the 100,000 on the podcast or was that pre recorded? Uh, yeah, okay, so we talked about, so like, even if like, oh, if I just had 10 more, I'm going to hit that goal. Yep. You know, because it doesn't take it's much. It's like in, a faucet. You just turn it on. Turn, turn it, it off. I love that. Yeah. Uh, a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, am I contractually obligated to you? What's my, what's my, what's my relationship with you? For sure. We like to work in a three month span and we do that to provide a drastic transformation, exactly like you said. So our goal is not to attract three, four, or five clients. No, it's you're like the P90X of uh, uh exactly. of hair clients. In right. ninety like days, ninety yeah. days, you're gonna be jacked. In and then you're gonna complain days. how jacked if you are. If only I could get a jack to make me P90X body without. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, and and alluding Look, you, to you're that, literally getting jacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, yes. In ninety days, Could our goal jacked. is to. <laughs> <laughs> is to fill as many gaps as you possibly have. And the, the fitness example, the P90X, is actually funny because Jack. I say to people, I'm not going to be your trainer. I'm just going to lose the weight for you. <gasps> That's what we're doing. Oh. We're literally doing everything for you. Ozempic. It's literally <laughs> Ozempic. <laughs> Ozempic. How, How, many many people people How many people said, you know, hey, if I get jacked or bring in a jack, I just stay here. Jack's going to do all the work, and then I'm going to have the body that I've always wanted. That's right. Literally. In 90 days. I, I say to people, we will get you clients while you sleep, quite literally, because they're, they're scheduled at 2 a.m., you wake up, boom, they're on the oh. book. It's nuts. P90 Jack. P90 yeah. Jack. Get Jack. Get, get Jack. Jack. Everybody Dude, needs to get Jack. <laughs> Listen, we could just sit around. I mean, we could talk forever. I mean, we're 50 minutes in. You know, 52 minutes in, and, like, I'm, like... That's great. That's what went fast. It went fast, right, and fast. I'm just... I, I, I'm i literally blown away by it. Like, like... like hey, could we, maybe we could set up, like... We like to do, like, small talks to set you up, and then let's, let's 
kind of go through break through like the features of 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 of, of, of getting jacked. Yeah, getting, getting jacked. jacked. Yeah, we'll call it getting jacked. We can call it jack off. Oh, uh, <laughs> You'll get a much well, different audience. I, know, that's the, uh, uh, I, I want him to get a bride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not, but uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, getting jacked, I like that. No, I love, I love that you guys get it right away because the hardest thing to articulate, you do, and and a lot of people. We just did a class this morning, and people were very re- defensive. Very defensive about, about what? Whole, Let's go through. They're that. like, "We don't want a discount." And we're like, "We never said anything about discounting. Never. That was never part." Right. of People don't want to lose I control. They feel like they're, they're losing control. 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 But that, you're yeah. really, you're allowing freedom. You're yes. you're not losing control. Freedom you're adding just freedom. Another word for uh, yeah. I, th- I think honestly, the big problem is when I mention market like digital marketing your services they immediately think groupon they immediately think 50 percent off yep. they immediately think all these negative connotations hey, yeah. you got to change the conversation you've got you've got to change the conversation into the united conversation what yeah. if what if i could fill your book and but I, he, I, here's where my resistance is you promised me six weeks i don't see that you know so immediately that's where i get resistance like, I 12 can, no 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 he 90 said days no, no fair Fair. You were but, giving but an example. When we oh, gave the sure. example, it was six weeks. So, so sure. immediately, that's where my resistance came from. We're like, hold on, six weeks. But, but I think if the, if I could change your book in ninety days, and 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 I I don't know what it is, but it has to be about that journey, about it, and then and not use the marketing thing. It's not about marketing. It's not about that. It's about filling your book. You know, let yeah. me figure that out because th- you don't you don't even need to care about the sort of like I got you. The yeah. haircut analogy. You just worried about the finish. You're not worried about the technique. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So maybe talk to a lot of these people. Less about the how, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think the the only reason I have to explain the how a little bit is because look um, at defensive Jack. Yeah, yeah. The the <laughs> basically the cost of doing Facebook advertising, right? Like that twenty bucks a day. That's not anything I see. Nothing I make money on. Sure. That's a, just a fee of cost of doing business with Facebook, right? right? So the battle I have to deal with is educating, you know, um, the beauty professional that you have to spend money to make money, right? So that's a foreign concept to most of these people. They've never done paid advertising. So trying to articulate that $20 a day and kind of that's ha- a, the that's benefit a, of, that's of doing that. That's after they're already interested. You know what I mean? Like, like if I'm yeah. in your class, I don't need to know that right away. I'm going to like, oh, man, that's what I want. So, Jack, take me to then you take me about, then you talk to me about that $20 a day. You know yep. what I mean? This is how, you know, you can fill me in all, all the all that stuff. But or maybe, you know, maybe the class is... Maybe the class is, is that you go, this is how you do it. But if you don't have time to do it, I'm hey, your jack. If you're listening, we will appreciate your DMs. Go to <laughs> what? <laughs> I might edit out the whole last five minutes, right. <laughs> minutes here. But, but dude, I, I, again, I'm just, I'm, I'm so impressed by this. This Thank is you. so, so cool. And this is really good feedback for me because I, I want to talk to people, you know, in the industry who are actually have experienced the pain points, right? Yeah. That's how I'm going to learn. That's how I'm going to make the product better. Because we're constantly iterating it, we're testing it. We test everything with Lux Car Lounge, our salon in Philly. We test everything. It's tried, true, and perfected first before we even release it to any of our clients, right? So we make sure this is working. Um, but no, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, That's amazing, dude. I'm so uh, from here on out now in the salon, you're like, okay, we're at 71. So now if we get to uh, 63, we're, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to shoot this number to 90, you know? <laughs> like... Uh, that's awesome. Oh, and the only thing he didn't mention is he will not have two businesses competing with each other. That's right. So we only work with. So one I can't hire him city. to do the marketing for our um, for our event on um, on uh, November 9th, tenth, and eleventh <laughs> <Right>. in St. <laughs> Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. Madeira Beach, Cambria, better event, better event, better event. <laughs> so so like if I'm in St. Pete and I'm working with you, you're not going to touch anybody else in St. Pete until we're done. Exactly because and what's what that? Hold on, no, that yeah. brings up other questions. Mm-hmm. What's that? How how big is that spread? I'd say about we like to focus on like eight to ten miles, got it. Um, because that's the radius we're going to be advertising around uh, for yeah. each person. But yeah, because what good is it if I'm competing with myself? That's just foolish, and that's not fair to our client, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's we've like had centric selling to the public. Yeah, right. We've had. Um, you know, in, in Megan's case, so she left the salon, opened up her own, and now that salon's reaching out to me. Hey, can you, can you run our marketing? I'm, like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't because, uh, you know, Megan's my client, right? So once people see, you know, they see it, they get it, they want it, right? Yeah, so yeah. I can talk a good game. Where can they see it? 
Great question. Uh, MySalonConcierge.com. You'll see everything you need to know. Videos. We've got tons of testimonials, how it all works. And on there, we have an application uh, basically making sure if you're a good fit, if your city's not taken, and then if you're a good fit, I'll hop on a call with you and kind of go, go through everything. Oh, this is amazing. So good, right? Uh, he might move to D.C. We might take him with us. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to go back to Frozen here either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think I'll stay in Tampa, <laughs> but we're, we're Tampa. a little weekend trip. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, 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 another, this is going to, sorry. I'm trying to get out of the conversation. A three-hour so podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, let's so, say we do a small talk. No, no, it's really cool because, like, um, like PBA just started um, an initiation this year, and what they're, what they're really working on is, is having universal license, right? So oh, universal, love that. and it's also yep. get this though it's even better because it's being backed by the DOD because the problem is is that you have like doesn't matter the gender but you have your spouse who's like in the military you get moved on and now like well now your hairdressing spouse has to move on too and then just the just the head up the headache and the hang ups mm-hmm. that, that that creates and I thought like how amazing would it be is like I need to hire Jack in my new zip code in my new oh my god how disappointed would you be if you needed a whole clientele and like you got Tony next door who's already hired Jack and now you're now you are jacked off to like to like take care of your book but that would be that would be amazing and it would also be kind of amazing like to to for you to partner with 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 people that are going to be moving every two years yeah almost yeah, if they could hire you on absolutely. a retainer absolutely always open opportunities yeah i love so that maybe that could be a disclaimer saying you know if my client moves to your city i'm working with you oh abs- i mean we do have people um I can't think of her name. She moved from Australia, I want to say, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had uh, one of her members move from Australia to the States with zero book whatsoever. So right now, I'm working uh, working with her, establishing an online identity. And, you know, I don't want to go too over time, but mm-hmm. one, impor- late. Yeah, one <laughs> important <laughs> thing I want people to really um, understand is how important Google reviews are and your online reputation, right? So I spoke this morning, and I said, all right, everyone in this room, you're probably not from Orlando. You're hungry tonight. You're trying to find a restaurant. What are you going to do? Probably Google restaurant near me, right? So I tried to articulate that we all value reviews, and your your customer, your ideal customer, also values reviews. They're in your town searching, you know, hair salon Orlando, hair salon or color Orlando, right? People are looking at reviews, and I do. I find that a lot of beauty professionals have no idea. They're not even on Google, mm-hmm. right? They don't prioritize this at all. So that's something completely free, right? Yeah, paid ads require money behind it, but just by getting more reviews, you're going to get higher ranked up in Google well, and more free business. So that's critical. To, to bring this it. conversation completely full circle is that what, and I'm using it more and more and more and more, but um, people are using AI more and more and more for that. I go, hey, give me a good restaurant with good reviews here. Mm-hmm. And then especially have you used the voice AI, it's amazing. Um, you, uh, when you use that, you know, that response, you need that high SEO to kind of get that response back, and that's how people are going to, um, are, are real soon. Like so especially right with Google, so they, if I say, hey, give me a good colorist in Bethesda, Maryland, they'll respond, oh, Corey Gray. Simmons yeah, and for studio. that to pop up, you got to have that Google My Business hit up. you got to right. have the good reviews sure. for that all to, to right. work. Um, and that's something that we do all that for the client, right? Oh. So I'm just going to take care of that, get a bunch of reviews, get higher up. It's all a, it's a, it's a snowball. It's all building yeah. on itself. Um, that's why I'm, I'm very confident. You know, when I say the six week stuff that it seems hard to believe, but working with someone who didn't pop up in Google at all to now having, you know, the 25 reviews and the ads between the two, it, it's a, it's a power. It's thing. a fast moving snowball. Oh, wow, that's so amazing, man. I'm so excited. All right. We got to get out of here. Elaine. Yeah. I love seeing you, but I really appreciate that you brought Jack along this yeah. time. I appreciate you, you having know? me. That's awesome, man. Got the whole family except got the, the, whole family. the husband. Yeah. When's he coming? No, you're not getting him. Well, hey, <laughs> he's <laughs> watching the dog. Hey, Elaine, what, what business is he starting? He's <laughs> in the business of having me do all the business and oh. and taking care of everything else. Very, he's, he's very a, smart man. Actually, he's running the salon right now. In Philly? When, when I had it handed back to me, I said... Hot potato. Mm-hmm. That's Hot all potato. yours. So I'm, I'm his best friend right now. When do you right get now. it, Jack? Yeah. That's awesome. Miss Man. Elaine Travis. Thank Mr. you for Jack having Travis. us back. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Always great to see you guys. That's awesome. Appreciate it. That's amazing. Pleasure meeting you guys. Yeah, Thank definitely. You. Thank you guys for awesome. uh, making time for us this weekend. And, oh, yeah. you know, Thank you for spending your day with us. And thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off.
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.